And see my head is filled with demons So I know that angels exist Feeling stuck at the bottom of the deepest sinking Even though my heart is broken Empty moments still I know I spit it Cold and cold is frozen Flows of oceans I've been rolling Tides of hopeless minds divided Filled with lies I killed my ties But where's my motive, huh? I've been on this path so long I forgot where home is Real or worse Still disturbed I feel reversed Going back and forth Whoever sees this and subscribes right now will get a free whiteboard. That's remarkable. What's going on, YouTube? It's Knox Hill, and we're back with our reaction series. So today, today, man, today is Friday, and it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day because you know we have ERB on deck. Now, you guys know I read the comments, the good, the bad, the ugly, the troll, and this is definitely up there as one of the highest requested ones. I know that Joker vs. Pennywise, I keep seeing that one. I'm going to get to that one soon. But this one is definitely up there with what you guys want to see me do next. I'm talking about Teddy Roosevelt versus Winston Churchill. Now you guys know I love my history. So this one is right up my lane. Um, yeah, studied history my whole life. Always enjoyed reading about it. Always kept up with it in politics. Love debating politics. So yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm ready for this one. But before we go any further, I want to give a quick shout out to the song in the intro. If you guys like that, yes, I am a rapper. I have a new album, Chaos Theory, 20 tracks, blood, sweat, tears, heart, and soul. There's a good chance if you like my breakdowns, the way that I think about music. I like to have music with a substance. I like to have music that makes you think. I like my doubles and triples. If you want to support me and support this channel directly, I will put that link below. Also, this is your reminder that tomorrow we're doing a live stream live stream so if you want to see me try to break my brain come on through and say what's up one o'clock eastern time but anyways anyways teddy roosevelt winston churchill step up to the plate let's see what you got okay got a little bit of a old school swing piano style bounce to this one this isn't that typical, just epic, crazy orchestral beat. All right, all right, where are we going with this one? You know we're here for it. I love it. I love it. Teddy coming out strong, trolling already. Bully, like golly gee. That was an old saying from back in the day. I love competition. Where would I mount the stuffed head of a Winston? Because he was a big game hunter. You know, he was proud of going to like Africa and hunting big game. And, and he's always been a hunter and he was a very machismo man. He had asthma from an early age. He believed, you know, in boxing and sport and fitness and just living that type of lifestyle, man. He was like red and blue, true American. I love competition. Now where would I mount the stuffed head? I like that. That's clever. And that just, I don't know, that just made me smile. Sorry, I forgot that the camera's there. I felt like I'm sharing an inside joke with ERB. Sorry, guys. Sorry, just let me, let me have my moment. Isthmus, digging ditches through an isthmus. He was also, like, he fought in the uh, Spanish-American War uh, when they went down to Cuba. The Rough Riders. Uh, came through and uh, wreaked havoc on the Spaniards, and they uh, fled in turn tail. But honestly, they were outnumbered. It wasn't really much of a war, even though it's called a war. But anyways, Knox goes off on tangents. The reason I like the Isthmus line, uh, you know, thin strip of land connecting two bodies of water, digging a ditch through it, Panama Canal. Teddy Roosevelt was in charge of the construction of the Panama Canal after the French gave it up. Oh, in style, I'm into fitness, digging ditches through an isthmus, rough riding down a Cuba line. What's up, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I just like that. And uh, shout out to DMX, Rough Riders. We got a little bit of a Rough Rider shout out in there. But also Teddy Roosevelt's uh, gang, I call it a gang, his, his army unit. They were infamously known as the Rough Riders, riding their horses up on San Juan Hill coming through that was the original rough riders man teddy roosevelt was hip-hop before it even existed i'm an american stud keep it all pure like food and drugs because uh didn't he start the fda i mean he did so much honestly a lot of the government programs and systems that we have in place today we can 
thank Teddy Roosevelt, like our national parks, uh, anti-monopoly legislation, food and drug administration. I mean, this was back in the Wild West days when they were just, you know, like chucking cocaine into Coke bottles and people were, were drinking that up, getting addicted to that. And uh, Upton Sinclair put out The Jungle then, which just like was so revealing of the factories and the meatpacking industry. And he was a muckraker. And this is me going back to my history days in class. Now my teacher would be so proud of me. But yeah, as a result of that, the Food Administration was born, Food and Drug Administration, and now having new standards for food and drugs and everything else. Oh, I like my food and drugs. I'm an American stock. And you're the British Alma I mean, for Christ. Does he look like Elmer Fudd? Yeah, I could kind of see it. Winston Churchill, bald head. Elmer Fudd talks funny. Winston Churchill had like this side lisp thing um, with some of his pronunciation. So, oh, and he liked hunting too, didn't he? But Elmer Fudd can never get Bugs Bunny. So maybe Teddy's taking shots like, you know, I'm, I'm an American stud. I'm the hunter over here. I'm going to put your head up on a wall. But you, you're like Elmer Fudd, man. You, you can't catch anything. You're like Run, my rabbit. food and drugs. I'm an American stud. And you're the British Alma I mean, for Christ's sake, look at that mug. At least grow a spruce mustache and cover part of it up. And let's face it. I like that. Let's look at that mug. At least grow a mustache. Like, basically saying you're ugly. Like, why can't you rock a mustache like me, Winston? But I also like the mug because it just makes me think of British people since they love tea and they always drink it out of mugs. So playing off of the mugs. Maybe I'm stretching, but who knows? Mug! At least grow a spruce mustache and cover part of it up! And let's face it, you're not all that great! You tossed a- Look how his face is. It looks like it's on Mount Rushmore there. That's clever. The let's face it, like playing off of his face, but you need to face the truth. Dash and cover part of it up! And let's face it, you're not all that great! That's very clever. And I just had a very scary thought. Oh good, I am recording. You tossed away lives in Gallipoli like there were scraps off your plate! You hold there were scraps off your plate. Okay, so we got fat jokes. Shots fired. And then Gallipoli. I'm thinking World War II, but Gallipoli wasn't World War II. That's when he was a uh, commander. Hey, that was a big failure because that was going up against the um, the Ottoman Empire um, in the Balkans, right? And they tried to do a sea invasion, invading the beaches. See where he gets the idea from Normandy. But uh, yeah, huge failure, loss of lives, and he was even demoted for that. That was World War One times. You yeah, Teddy, come with the birds. Away lives in Gallipoli like there were scraps off your plate. Your whole miserable country is the size of one state. No. See my way to running that without donning my pants. Go toe to toe. Like donning my pants, Nez. That he wore because he started to go blind uh, in his one eye. And it was also very fashionable at the time. And then, uh, what was the stat that I read? Great Britain can fit into Texas 2.8 times, almost three times. Think about that, people. Think about that. It's a one state! You see my way to running that without donning my pants! So what he's bragging is that, look, I ruled America, and I ruled it well. I balled out. You? You can't, you can't even just roll a little island, be in control of that. You want to swag out on us. Oh, with me, you bloated, drunk old man! Why don't you do -si go on over to a 12-step <laughs> Dosey Doe. Hey, shout out to Square Dancing. Okay. I got a story about that, but it's too embarrassing. Maybe another time. But that's where the Dosey Doe comes in. You know, Teddy being a maverick, that Wild West kind of personality that he injects. Um, and then uh, Winston Churchill was an alcoholic. He liked to have, didn't he have a uh, whiskey with breakfast too? Anyways, he was always drinking. So 12 step program, Alcoholics Anonymous. We got it. Why don't you toasty go on over to a 12 step program? Well, I must have trust fund lush with my American muscle to walk Sheffield. There are a lot of bars in this, man. I like it. I'll bust a trust fund lust. And like we said, he was very breaking up monopolies. Teddy Roosevelt highly believed in the free market. But man, he was, he was a monopoly buster. That's for sure. Busting up those trust fund babies and just old aristocratic America and old business blood, man. He just brought in a new wave of regulation. I've learned something about these ERBs. I don't think it is a proper ERB unless there is a come on over here and suck it joke told in a very clever historical reference. So walk softly and carry a big stick. Roosevelt said he got that from...
what, like an African proverb, probably just to make it sound more, you know, enigmatic and foreign, but really he just, he came up with that. But that was like his sort of phrase for his policy, you know, walk softly and carry a big stick. And he was very machismo and that's just how he lived his life and how he ruled as president. And I say rule like president is a kingdom ruler. I need to find a better word. So walk softly over here and give my big stick a suck on. So the big stick, and then he's got a big stick. Just walk softly over and give it a suckle, Winston. Pass me a cigar and a large glass of brandy. I'm about to take you up prematurely, like your family. Oh, minister oh no, 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 no. That's dirty. Oh, that's probably the best bar so far. Already one bar in. And I think Winston's going to take the lead right now because when we got blows like that below the belt... So Teddy Roosevelt lost his mom and his dad very early ages. One to cancer. I can't remember what the other one was to. And didn't he lose his wife? He lost his wife and his mom on the same day. I mean that. Wow. Just just to deal with that, man. I'm about to take you up prematurely like your family. I am the Rhyme Minister. Fresh in a hat and dinner jacket. You look like a mix of Epic Lloyd and a Pringles packet. I was... Did we just break the fourth wall? So I'm guessing that Epic Lloyd is Teddy Roosevelt. And with the mustache, he looks like the Pringles packet. Okay, rhyme minister. He's the prime minister with the bars, having that glass of brandy, playing off of his alcoholism. Like, yeah, all right, I'm going to own up to that. And dinner jacket. You look like a mix of Epic Lloyd and a Pringles packet. I was saving the planet from an axis of darkness while you were back home opening national parks. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. He's like, hey, I actually fought. In World War One and World War Two, we fought the Axis powers. We fought the Nazis. We fought the Japanese. We fought Italy. You know, we we took it all on. What what were you doing? You were back home during peace times when you were president. You were playing Boy Scouts, opening national parks, which he was involved with. So shout out to that. From an Axis of Darkness, while you were back home opening national parks, yes. you were born asthmatic. You're going to choke hard. Nah. Wake up every day. I like that one too. You know, he was born asthmatic and we talked about this. This is why he like believes so much in sport and taking care of his health and his body. I mean, he really was a beast with that. But Winston is saying, hey, well, you're worried about that and you're literally going to choke on this rap and in this battle. I'm just going to keep chain smoking, chilling, living the dream because that's what I do. And, and he cranked through cigars, man. Cigars, alcohol, Winston Churchill, living the dream. I choke hard while I wake up every day and chain smoke cigars. I'll fight you on the beaches. I'll fight you Ooh, on the beaches. Yeah. Anywhere you want to fight, I'll fight you and I'll beat you. See? I like that. I like that reference because that was just one of the, the greatest speeches in history. And that was during the Battle of Britain. You know, Britain's finest hour, really, and Churchill's finest hour, I would say. When France had been conquered, Germany was just bombing and bombing and bombing London and all over England at night and Britain held on and Churchill came out over the radio and just just gave a speech like we're never ever going to give up we're never going to surrender you know we'll fight on the beaches we'll fight on the hills we'll fight on the landing heads we'll just we'll, we'll fight everywhere you know we will never ever give in and it was just such an iconic moment and they didn't give in and yeah, I know that we entered the war and obviously helped to change the pace of it, but so was Britain, so was Hitler's decision to go try to invade Russia too and fight on two fronts. But one thing that allowed us to have Normandy and D-Day and all that was because we were able to launch the invasion from Britain because Britain held on. In the key and momentous battle of Britain, Germany realized that it's going to be really damn difficult to conquer Britain and our Navy is not superior to theirs. So how the hell are we going to get troops over there? Because bombing them ain't working. More history lessons. I'll fight you on the beaches. Yes. Anywhere you want to fight, I'll fight you and I'll beat you. See, I might be battling you even though I'm toasted, but <laughs> tomorrow I'll be sober and you'll still be roasted. My parents died. I like that. Hey, even though that I'm liquored up right now, and you know how people like to apologize for things they say the next day, Winston's like, no, it's still truth. I'm having that moment of clarity. Ooh, wow. Wow. Come on. Knox, are you American? What are you doing? No, I'm toasted. I, I think Winston's taking but it right tomorrow now. tomorrow I'll be sober and you'll still be roasted. My parents died when they were young and it was morbid, but at least they didn't ditch me when they were alive like yours did. Oh shit, World War... <sighs> it's like these guys can read minds. Literally, when I'm giving it to Winston, 
Teddy comes back with the greatest rebuttal yet. I mean, those lines were scathing, but he's like, hey, yeah, I lost my parents early, but at least I wasn't abandoned like yours abandoned you. You didn't even really get to know your parents, you know? You didn't know who your father was, really. He pretty much disowned you. He considered your mom a daughter. A daughter? No, a sister. Daughter, now that would be some Oedipus weird shit. But, but at least they didn't ditch me when they were alive like yours did. Oh shit, World War II soon. Well, Teddy's dropping bombs, so you best go hide in your tube. Hide in your tube. The tube is like the underground in London. Oh shit, World War II soon. World War II reference dropping bombs. Battle of Britain, Germany bombing Britain. All right, Teddy's dropping some lyrical bombs. Too soon. Well, Teddy's dropping bombs, so you best go hide in your tube. Nice. You be ashamed of your military. That's a really dope transition right there. So you best go hide in your tube. Look at that. Ooh, you should be ashamed of your military honor. Everyone knows you're back at home like, thank God for Pearl Harbor. Don't worry, the U.S. will give you... Shots fired. Which is true. I mean, even Churchill said, you know, I slept great thanks to Pearl Harbor because I know that we're going to be saved. Like, the industry and population and size and resources of the states is about to enter the war and lend a massive hand to england uh, everyone knows you're back at home like thank god for pearl harbor don't worry the u.s will give you a pass just change your poster to keep calm and kiss my cousin's ass because <laughs> america you know we're known to as like cousins of england we all speak english you know started off as a british colony and then the keep calm and carry on has really become popular in later years. Like you see it on posters now, you see it on furniture, you see it everywhere. It really has become even a worldwide sort of theme. But it started and originated during World War II and when things were looking very bleak and it was, you know, keep calm and carry on when everyone was fearing an access attack and an attack by Germany. That's clever. That's clever. Change your poster to all right, all right, it's back to Teddy now. We're back to Teddy. Calm and kiss my cousin's ass. Teddy there. I don't think it's very fair for a British bulldog to melee with a teddy bear. You're no ma British bulldog. Winston Churchill was considered like a bulldog. Teddy Roosevelt birthed the name Teddy Bear, even though he was a hunter and hunting bears, and his nickname was Teddy. And that's actually where Teddy Bear originated from. Isn't it ironic that a very buff man who loves boxing and hunting was named after a cute, cuddly teddy bear? Yeah. Life is crazy. Think it's very fair for a British bulldog to melee with a teddy bear. Uh, you're no man, you're an overgrown boy scout. I should stuff you in a pram just so you can throw your toys out. Sure. Put your f oh, we're using British terms here. So pram, like a uh, baby stroller. And the saying to uh, throw your toys out of the pram, like you've, you've spat your, your dummy out. Basically, like you're just, you've, you've seen your ass about things. Okay. Okay, I like that. I like that. And then what else did I miss? Because I just zoned out for a second. You're an overgrown Boy Scout. Teddy Roosevelt was a part of the Boy Scouts. Wasn't he like a scout leader? Yeah. All right. Boy boy scout. Scout. I see what you're doing here. I see what you're doing, Winston. I should stuff you in a pram just so you can throw your toys out. They put your fat head on a mountain to save face. Hmm. But if Rushmore was a band, then you'd play bass. Look at Roosevelt. Hey, we got a shout out to all the presidents on Mount Rushmore. If they were a band... Everybody knows I was in a band once. I was the lead man for it. But uh, we went through like three or four different bass players, man. There's always that stereotype. Bass players are weird. Nobody really likes the uh, the bass player. I don't know. I did have some cool bass players. To save face, but if Rushmore was a band, then you play bass. Look at Roosevelt. The dude's about to lose the bout to Churchill. Look at Roosevelt. The dude's about to lose the bout to Churchill. Best flow I've heard so far. Then you play bass. Look at Roosevelt. The dude's about to lose the bout to Churchill. If a bullet to the chest won't stop you, my words will. A bullet! No. Why did you do that, Winston? That's such a good setup. What a great story. Teddy Roosevelt was shot in the chest. Teddy Roosevelt, still being shot in the chest, said, Hold up. I'm not going to the hospital. I'm going to give a speech first. Gave his speech, then he rolled into the hospital. Then they said, oh, we, we can't operate, we can't take it out. All right, leave the bitch in there. I'm going to keep on keeping on. And that's what he did. Dude was a badass mofo. Don't do that, Winston. You're going to set him up. A bullet to the chest won't stop you. My words will. A bullet can't stop the bullet moose. TR will give double your C the full dude. Ooh. 
Oh, wordplay, wordplay. Clever right there, man. TR will give WC. Teddy Roosevelt will give Winston Churchill. Oh, my God. The deuce. Because the WC, right, that goes up outside of doors in England for a bathroom. It's called a WC. That's clever as hell. And then the deuce, like deuce is in taking a shit. And then he has shit lines, whatever shit you throw at me. But also the deuce, like pieces we do in the States. But when you do the deuce in England, it's another way of flicking someone off. That was clever as hell. DR will give WC the full deuce. Whatever shit you throw at me, I'll just return to sender. I'll battle to the end and I will never surrender. Nice. Oh, wow. I will never surrender because, yeah, Britain never surrendered to Germany. Clever, clever, clever. Turn to sender. I'll battle to the end and I will never surrender. Oh, wow. oh I wanted more. Oh, so that was Dan Bull. Okay, shout out to Dan Bull. I've actually been on a song with Dan Bull. It was a nerd out song. Maybe I'll find that and I'll put the link uh, below to it. Shout out to Dan Bull, man. And Epic Lloyd was TR. Nice. I'm just letting it go. Making sure there's no surprises. I'll tell you what, man. Some of these epic beats that we've heard, it's easy to bring the energy and to build and to come into different pockets. That beat was definitely different. It had a different type of bounce. Um, some of that percussion really reverberated. Just, just the way that it was. Just a different sort of tempo and pace. Definitely more difficult to navigate just from a technical perspective with the flows. I thought they both did a really good job injecting their personalities, getting out in front of the beat and just sort of carrying their own tempo to it and with it. Right. In terms of punches, like we said, first verses, I thought Churchill started off on the strong foot. But Teddy, man, as soon as Teddy came back with that one rebuttal about Winston Churchill not knowing his parents and flipping Winston Churchill's lines on him, I thought Teddy just started to run away with it from there. And then he had some great lines. And then Winston very foolishly set him up for the taking the bullet to the chest lines. And then that WC deuce scheme, wow, that was like a triple, quadruple entendre. I mean, there was stuff wrapped within wraps there. That was cool, man. I'm going to have to give this one to Teddy. But what do you guys think? Comment below. But anyways, epic rap battles? You were Knox Hill certified. So hope you guys liked today's video. If you did, be sure to smash that like button. Comment down below any other ERBs you want to see me do or if there's other artists you want to see me check out. I try to read all of your comments, guys. I respond to as much as I can. So please keep commenting and keep posting. Also, if you're here at the end of this video, do me a favor. Subscribe and notifications on. Also, you might think you're subscribed, but sometimes things happen with the algorithm. So do me a favor and double check that below. As always, this is your reminder to stay safe, to stay positive. It's Knox Hill. I'll catch you in the next vid. I'm out.